allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the September 22nd County Commission meeting. I'd remind you to silence your cell phones. Meeting documents are on the end of the counter next to Commissioner Bender. And if you need a listening device, Robert is in the front row and he could help you with that. That we will move on to routine business. Item number one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Any additions? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is approve, approval of the county commission meetings of September 8, 2015. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any changes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number three is bills to be paid in the amount of $735,761.41. Pay the bills. Second. A motion and a second. Any comments? My only comment would be this is the bills for two weeks since we did not convene last week. So I have a motion to pay the bills. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number four is reports. Item A, Minnehaha County Sheriff's Department report for August 2015. Item B, Register of Deeds monthly report of fees collected in August 2015. And item C, Auditor's account with the Treasurer, County Treasurer as of August 31st, 2015. And those are all on file in the Auditor's office. Item number five is personnel uh, with Jen. Good morning. Good morning. Item A is consider a motion to approve routine person, personnel actions. Is so, there a motion? So moved. Is second. there a second? Are there any questions for Jen this morning? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes <coughs> unanimously. Item number B is a special commission action. Jen. Uh, this is a commission action to appoint Carrie Benz as the Assistant Director of Human Services at a 2111 um, to her promotion to Director of Human Services at a 247 and the wage for that would be $3,155 biweekly. This is outside of the normal hiring range um, for a new employee at county. That's why the request is coming before you this morning, not outside of what we would normally do though for a Director of Departments. Okay. Are there any questions on this? Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion <coughs> passes unanimously. Thank you, Jan. Thank and you. congratulations to Carrie Benz and welcome on board, even though she's not here. Maybe she's <laughs> listening today. Item number six is application for abatement. Um, Kyle Helseth. Oh, and we have Pam Nelson first. Hi. Um, the first abatement that you are considering today is for um, the purposes of the elderly freeze. So I would ask that you support that abatement. Okay. This, uh, I'll make the I motion. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Have a second. Motion and a second to abate R RDID number 38605 for 2014 property taxes in the amount of $734.07. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Item number B is Diocese of Sioux Falls, RDI number 41943, 2014 property taxes in the amount of $11,283.19. Kyle. That was easy. I said it all for you. <laughs> Are there any questions for uh, Kyle? This is the older housing for the Catholic Diocese that's uh, been in a state of flux. For approximately a year and they finally got their paperwork done and entered so they're requesting the abatement okay any questions is there Manager, a motion i would ask oh, commissioner a, um kyle so is it a new uh, um, plan for that building i mean the the church has probably owned it all this time right no it no. was owned by a uh, private, private holding company okay okay make a motion to approve it mm. motion is there a second second Motion and second. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Say thank you. Item number seven is um, notices and requests. Item A is a notice for Surdorf Township for the following new 25 mile per hour speed limit posting notification. Number one is on Ditch Road from 256th Street to the Big, Big Sioux Road. Item two is on 473rd Avenue from 
253rd Street to the Big Sioux Road. And number three is on the entire portion of the Big Sioux Road to the Surduff Township. Um, second notice is item B, notice from the South Dakota Historical Society from the Terrace Park and Japanese Gardens, City of Sioux Falls, has been placed on the historical register, on the National Registry of Historical Places. Item number, did you want to comment on that? Okay. Item number eight is the planning and zoning notices. There are none. Item number nine is petition for compromise of lien. Jeff Barth. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is actually a cleanup of a lien that we approved some time back. Uh, we had the wrong legal description in on our property there, and uh, we need to uh, make a corrected uh, motion. I will make that motion. Second. Motion and a second to do a cleanup on the legal description of compromise of lien number 9945. Do we need any more than that? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Commissioner Barth. Next is opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone who would like to speak about anything that is not on today's agenda, this would be your opportunity. Okay. With that will go on to regular business. Item number 10 is a briefing on the Southeast Development Foundation's Governor's House Program and Killer Forbes. Excuse me. Good morning. Lynn will just make you identify yourself again sure. for the camera. I'm Lynn Keller Forbes. I'm the Executive Director of the Southeastern Development Foundation here in Sioux Falls. Robert. Can I run this phone here? The TV's not on. Is it on? Yeah, yeah, but our monitor is not on yet. He's still working on it. In front of you that we see. That's okay. I expect technically. history not all of you um, I think Commissioner Bender may not have been at the time but um, about a year or so ago I came before you guys and we talked about the possibility of the Southeastern Development Foundation taking some of the lots you receive back from taxes and trying to develop those and put them back on the tax rolls as you're probably aware doing development in some of the current neighborhoods has been a challenge you have narrow lots that you're dealing with a lot of times you're dealing with unforeseen things, whether or not the water and sewer is any good. And there's just not a lot of profit margin there a lot of times because it's somewhat of a limited targeted buyer that may want to live in those neighborhoods as well. So it's it's ideal for low income um, affordable housing. It's not something that the private sector has latched on to very much. And so we were asked if we would get involved and we worked uh, real closely with the auditor Bob Blitz on that as well. So in this, in, uh, we're finished with our first three houses, but I wanted to come back down and give you kind of an update of of what we did, where, where are they at, what do they look like, all those kinds of things. So there were several partners in this. You guys gave us the lots. Um, Southeastern Development Foundation provided the financing, the staffing, all of those kinds of things. The Southeastern Council of Governments receives a $1,200 commission on each governor's house that it sells. They turn around and re-gifted that back to SEDF so that the homeowners um, to help pay for the appliances. And then South Dakota Housing also gave us about $5,000 per lot to help pay for the costs of, of cleaning up the lot. So when we get title from you, it, takes anywhere from three to five thousand dollars to kind of clean up some of those things depending on how messy the title issues are on them. So we developed three houses. They were all three bedroom. They were all two bath. We did attach two car garages on all of them. We did all appliances including the washer and dryer and then the one on Grange did have a basement on it. This will give you a kind of I wanted to do some before and after. So the one of the lots you gave us was at 120 South Waltz and this is an aerial of the old picture that was there and then this is what it looked like. Um, before the city came in and did an emergency declaration, they tore this down within, I think, 30 days because the foundation was falling in. And I think that happened in 2009. So this sat empty um, all of those years. Len, could you sure. tilt that thing up just there? Is that better? So you're Whoops. talking into it. Yeah. Sorry about that. Go back. 
Oh. That's what happens when I'm sitting here punching as I'm talking. Okay. Very good. Okay. Perfect. So this is the demo when they were doing it that day, and I guess it was 2011 that they actually demoed this one. So this is the house we ended up putting on there. We ended up putting in um, a garage on the front. We could have put one in the back. It probably would have added about $10,000 to the cost just because of the concrete. So we ended up putting it on the front instead. Um, if you're like me, I don't appreciate shoveling, and so I would much rather have A, an attached garage, and B, one that had less concrete to shovel in the winter. Yeah. So that's what this one looks like. And there's another picture of it. Um, we didn't have a real up-to-date picture. Unfortunately, the city, when they tore down this house at 201 South Grange, didn't keep a picture of it. This one I got from Bob. It came from your um, archives. I love the car in front. You know it's an old photo. It kind of gives you an idea of what was on this lot. But this is at the corner of 10th and Grange. And this is an aerial of what it looked like beforehand. Now, when I looked at it, I was like, wow, this looked like it was a really neat house at one time. My understanding is it had been kind of stripped of its character, broken up like so many of these houses are. And I think when Bob was on the city council that... Um, it was it was unoccupied. There were uh, homeless people living in it, dead animals, lots of trash, all those kinds of things. So the city did tear that down as well. So we put two houses. We split it into two. Um, one of the things that we discovered is there's only water and sewer to one of the lots, so we had to put another water and sewer in, which was another 10 grand that we hadn't counted on. But this is at the corner of Grange. This is the one that has um, a full basement on it. And here's the one that faces 10th Street. And it's, it uh, is a crawl space. So I want to give you some ideas of what do the interior of these look like. If you remember um, or you re what recall or for a briefing of those of you that are going, what are governor's houses? They're actually made by inmates and built by inmates in Springfield. Um, they're two by six construction, they're energy efficient, and then they're delivered on site when they're actually done. So they're not manufactured homes. People think that sometimes they don't come in pieces. They are one building and they come uh, all put together. So, um, the, and the cupboards are made at Pheasant Land Industries in, uh, at the prison here as well. And these are just the more interior photos as well. Um, these come with two bathrooms. The three bedrooms have a full main bath. That's what this is. And then there's also a second half bath off the master. So I want to give you an idea on the sales stuff. We sold the one on Waltz first. It was kind of funny as these things go. Um, we sold all three of these within two days. We didn't even have 10th Street here. We didn't have Grange here. Um, we had people coming in. And, and just wanting them, seeing seeing what we had done. Now, we did, I have my realtor's license, so we did put Waltz on MLS, and that generated enough traffic to sell all of them. So we closed on the two on 10th and Grange on the 31st. Um, the one with the full basement was 129.9, sorry, and the other one with a, um, was 114.9 for the crawl spaces. And then we closed on the other one on 9-11. Uh, I wanted to do kind of an economic impact. You guys took a risk with us when you gave us these, and I wanted to see what the payback was on these. And so I kind of estimated, and it may not be precisely, but 2% uh, of the sales tax, and what would that be per year? And, and the annual impact would be about $7,200 in getting those three back on the tax rolls for what we sold them for. Okay. Um, we belong to the National Association of Development Organizations. It's an, um, an organization out of D.C. They ask for innovation awards. I submitted this as something that was different uh, and new, and we were selected for an innovation award, and it'll be given at the annual meeting in October. So um, you also gave us two other lots. You gave us 525 North Holly, and you gave us 303 North Fairfax. Um, when we did this, we weren't sure what the demand would be. We weren't sure if we'd end up holding these. Hindsight 2020, we could have done all five of them. They would have all been sold. Um, the governor's houses are about 250 days out, so we have ordered houses for these two, and they'll go um, early next spring. And we're actively looking for additional lots. Um, we're hoping that somewhere in that five to 10 per year is kind of where we think our sweet spot might be. Um, so anything that you have come up in the future, you know, we'd certainly like a shot at uh, maybe being able to replicate what we've already done. Okay. So, thank you. Questions for Lynn. <clears throat> Congratulations on your award. Thank you. That is wonderful. It's great recognition for South Dakota, but also for your office. It's, it's just really great that we move forward. And I, I, congratulations to the commission on seeing this as something that would continue to grow our community and something that we can actually do for economic growth with our limited funds. And that's give um, little pieces of land that might not be developed to SECOG and have them move forward with it. So uh, absolutely a win-win. People in their houses, out of our problems, and paying um, property taxes back and, to the county. And kind of a neat side story to this is the lady that bought the house at 201 South Grange had lived in the house at 810 West 10th Street, and her house burned down in April. 
So she was displaced. She was living in an apartment. She wanted to stay in the same neighborhood, and so we were able to help her. The people that bought the other two were um, single. Um, I want to say elderly. That's all in the eye of the beholder, but uh, <laughs> elderly women that uh, bought the other two as well. Okay, wonderful. Thank sure. you, Lynn. Great. Thank you. Great. Great. That will go on to item number 11, which is a briefing by the City of Sioux Falls Water Division on an upcoming Big Sioux Aquifer study. Mr. Anderson, good morning. Good morning. And if you would just identify yourself again. And uh, Greg Anderson, City of Sioux Falls Public Works Water Division. Uh, here today to talk just a little bit about an upcoming project that we will uh, have coming to uh, map the uh, subsurface subsurface of the uh, Big Sioux Aquifer from Sioux Falls all the way up to near Dell Rapids. We've partnered with the uh, USGS uh, to complete this task. It's a four-year task. First, uh, first part of the task would be to uh, bring in a company to use an AEM system, aerial electromagnetic system that will fly over the aquifer in east, west, and north-south quadrants to put signals down into the soil that will actually map the subsoil characteristics of the aquifer. Uh, Sioux Falls has a large investment in the Big Sioux Aquifer. Uh, we have uh, water rights that are up to almost 75 million gallons per day, and when we place wells in the aquifer, uh, they usually cost about two and a half million dollars a piece. Well, with this modern technology where we can actually map the subsurface characteristics, it will actually help us in placement of those wells and get the best beneficial use for the, for the dollar. The second part of the project is the USGS is going to create a computer model of the aquifer in its relationship to the Big Sioux River. The river is the key recharge source for the aquifer, so it's important for us to know how the water moves in the aquifer as we take water out with our wells and how the river puts water back into the aquifer to keep everything recharged. So I thought it was important that this project is beginning, going to start in the first part of October. I thought it was important for the county co commissioners to know what we're going to do, kind of see what we're going to do, invite you to our open house. That'll be sometime in the first part of uh, October. So you can see the company that's going to do this and you see the equipment. And then if there was any questions you would have, I could try to answer them. We've already reached out to the city of Dow Rapids and the city of Baltic. Uh, city Engineering has uh, mailed out probably over 2,200 letters to every address. So the people of the area that will see this helicopter will actually kind of know what's going to happen. Uh, can we pull that exhibit back up? Uh, no, the, uh, the map. I don't know if you can get that on the entire page. But if you look at the exhibit there, you see the yellow lines are the flight lines. The red circles are areas that we're going to avoid because of the interference of the equipment that's going to be used. And there are high populated areas where there's power lines that will interfere with the technology. So we're going to avoid those. And we're avoiding the cities like Baltic and Crooks so the yellow lines represent where we're going to be flying. The red areas will be the areas we're going to avoid. There really is no health effects that we're concerned with. We've been assured that by the company that's going to be doing this, uh, CGG out of Canada, and they're using a resolved system, specialized equipment and software that's going to collect the data. Just to get escape. Greg, how far apart are those lines? Uh, they're about uh, 300 yards. Okay. How long do they expect it to take to fly over that uh, portion? About a day and a half, actually. Okay. They're, they should be here for about five days. Okay. If rain weather would uh, cause them to delay. Okay. How do I get that next picture? 
Have the people in that area been advised that this is going to happen? Or? Yes, uh, we uh, sent out letters to every address, homeowners and renters. So that's what the uh, it's going to look like as the helicopter is flying about 200 feet above the ground, and the probe or the sensor is going to be about 100 feet below that, and they're just going to follow those lines, north and south and east and west. The, uh, the company wants to get in and get out before hunting season. So we're going to try and do that. Not because they're worried about being shot at. They're just worried about spooking the animals. Uh, confined animals, uh, mostly I've been told uh, uh, poultry can be a little excited about the helicopters flying over. And it's going to be every 300 yards so you can see somebody going across your property three or four times before they get to the neighbors, so. Okay. Commissioner Barth, do you have a question? Yeah, um, I a couple questions on uh, our water usage. Uh, how much comes directly out of the river? How much comes out of the aquifer? And how much are we taking from Lewis and Clark these days? Well, that varies based on time of the year and temperature and demand for water. Uh, this summer, we've been averaging over 15 million gallons a day from Lewis and Clark utilizing that resource. Our peak day this summer was only about 25 million gallons, and so about 10 of that was coming out of the Big Sioux Aquifer. How much? How much uh, of that? About 10 million a day this summer was coming out of the Big Sioux Aquifer, about 15 million a day from Lewis and Clark. The balance from the river? Uh, so far this year, we've only been utilizing river water for about uh, two weeks, and that was about 2 million a day. Oh. With all the rain we've had, there hasn't been a large demand uh, for lawn irrigation, so the demand for water hasn't been that high. Typically, in the wintertime, our domestic use is around 14 and a half to 15 million per day. Okay. So we I'm dump sure. a lot of water on our grass. Not this summer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, with this device, you'll be able to, like, measure the, uh, the underground you know, say the presence of quartzite or whatever uh, under the uh, overlay of soil and water? The device will characterize the subsoil types, the porosity of soil. Uh, it can actually go down over 900 feet to, to examine the soil characteristics. Uh, the Big Sioux Aquifer is only like 50 feet deep at its deepest. So this can actually go much deeper than what the aquifer actually is. Now, the, the aquifer north of Del Rapids is a lot deeper. Um, has, has the city ever thought of putting wells up there? Well, the Sioux Falls still has uh, future use permits for the Sioux Falls unit of the big Sioux aquifer, and that's from the quartz outcropping in Del Rapids down to the quartz outcropping yeah. in Sioux Falls. So that area is called the Sioux Falls unit and we still have future use permits for there. And for us to go further to north of Dow Rapids, we'd have to cross that boundary of quartz, and that's quite a distance, and the pipeline would be huge. Yeah. So at this point in time, our focus is on utilization of the existing water rights in the Sioux Falls unit of the Big Sioux Aquifer. Okay. Any additional questions for Greg? Anything else for us, Greg? Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll uh, reach out to you when we nail down the open house. You've seen the Argus Leader last week ran a nice little story about this project. Uh, we're, we're quite excited, even though it's a, a four-year project. Uh, yes, it will help us with future placement of wells, but the, the, the most exciting thing to me is the model that will demonstrate how water moves from the river into the aquifer and, and how the water moves through the aquifer. So as the, the area grows, the, the Big Sioux is the major source of water, Big Sioux aquifer, and to be able to plot how the water moves, especially during drought years or extended drought years, so that we can utilize the water in the most efficient and effective way, it'll be paying dividends for decades to come. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for giving me the time to be here. Thanks for thinking of us.
We'll go move on to item number 12, which is authorize the chairman and the director of emergency management to sign the state and local agreements between Minnehaha County and the state of South Dakota for emergency for county emergency management. Linda Young. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Linda Young, Emergency Management Office. Uh, in front of you is our yearly grant that we work with uh, from the state of South Dakota. Uh, if you recall, the uh, state of South Dakota provides 50% of salary and other, or 50 of reimbursement for salary and other administrative expenses within the office. Uh, for that um, reimbursement, uh, we do a list of project or a list of uh, work efforts for them. Uh, those work efforts haven't really changed much over the last couple of years. It's updating and then working on different planning projects as they arrive. Um, last year's grant amount was 227,360.22. Uh, our grant amount won't actually arrive until after the federal fiscal budget uh, gets finalized and then it works down through the state uh, that way. So uh, that's why just about a month ago you signed an addendum. Uh, we're a whole year behind from when we actually signed the agreement until we actually get paid for it, but um, that's the pace of government sometimes. So I'd be happy to ask, answer any questions that you have. Otherwise, I need the uh, commission to authorize uh, the, the uh, chairperson and myself to enter into the agreement with the state of South Dakota. So any questions for Lynn? Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. <clears throat> motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Thank Lynn. you, Commissioner. Item number 13 is authorize the chairman to sign notice of awards, special conditions, assurances, and certification for fiscal year 2016 juvenile accountability block grant in the amount of $15,723 for the LSS juvenile MRT program. Good morning, Erin. Good morning, Erin Serska, JDAI coordinator, and I'm asking you to authorize the chairman to sign uh, this grant application. We've been getting this grant and acting as the pass-through for numerous years. Last year was the last year of allocation, uh, but it came to our attention and we were offered the last 15000 that hadn't been spent down the last few years. And the group decided to use the MRT, which is an evidence-based model program that reduces recidivism in kids. If there's not any questions, I'd ask to authorize. We uh, took this to our policy group last week and discussed with LSS what the program was about and how to best use this grant money for continues in the JDAI um, changes of philosophy and programming. So are there any questions for Aaron? Ma Madam Chair, so is, is this uh, uh, notice of award that we're not applying for a grant? This is awarded the grant? They, they technically call it an application. It doesn't get awarded to anyone else, but they have to prove what we want to use the money for. Right. We've already been notified that the money is available for gotcha. Minnehaha yeah. County, but we still okay. had to apply for it. I just wanted to yet. clarify that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And I see LSS is here. If there's any questions for them about the programming. I'd make a motion to authorize the chair to sign this notice of award. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, LSS, for coming. Um, item number 14 is consider a motion to authorize the submission of a response to the solicitation of the U.S. District Court, District of South Dakota, Probation and Pretrial Services Office to provide non-medical detoxification services. Robert. Good morning, morning, Commissioners. Robert Wilson, County Commission Office. Uh, for many years, the county has had an agreement with the um, U.S. District Court Probation and Pretrial Services for non-medical detoxification services. Uh, what we're looking for uh, from you today is your authorization to submit a response uh, to the office uh, to continue this um, this service and and set a, uh, a reimbursement amount. And this is a, a service that is not used uh, particularly often, but uh, basically when uh, um, uh, the feds have, have inmates that they need to take and have in custody who need non-medical detoxification services, this is where they bring them. Uh, the rate uh, currently is $140 a day. That was raised last year from $128.59 a day. And uh, we are uh, uh, recommending a, uh, a response uh, including that, uh, that same rate as $140 a day. Okay. Any additional questions for Robert on this? Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. I'll so move to uh, authorize us to proceed. Second. A motion and a second. All those. Uh, 
to set the rate at 140. At 140, um, yes. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item number 15 is consider a resolution to authorize the following delinquent property tax repayment proposals. Item A is a proposal su submitted by Dwight M. and Marlis J. Woods from the Woods Living Trust. Are you talking about these, Robert? I am. Um, as you know, we have the uh, 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 tax deed auction scheduled for this coming Saturday morning, uh, September 26th. Uh, and in preparation for that, uh, the Commission Office, the Auditor's Office, and the Treasurer's Office have been working with uh, occupants on, on three of these homes uh, that uh, otherwise would be um, part of the auction on Saturday morning. Uh, obviously, it is uh, uh, certainly a, a last, would be a last uh, resort to um, displace uh, folks who are in their home and, and move forward with the uh, with the sale of a of an occupied structure. Uh, along those lines, we have uh, made contact uh, with the residents, the former uh, the former owners of record, uh, to uh, assess their situation, see if there is is a way that that we can um, uh, come up with a payment plan that that works both for their finances and gets. The, the back taxes, interest, and uh, penalties paid in a reasonable amount of time, get them back on track of being on uh, on schedule getting the property taxes paid, takes care of the, the, the county and our fiduciary responsibility to, to collect the taxes, and allows them to remain in their home. Uh, to that end, we have three resolutions for your consideration today, one for each of the properties identified, um, and this is the terms. Uh, of these resolutions have been um, reviewed by each of the former owners of record, uh, and they have uh, given their uh, assurances that they will be able to to fulfill these. Um, each of these have fairly unique uh, a fairly unique set of circumstances, and, and so it's not certainly not a one size fits all um, approach that we've we've taken in drafting these resolutions. But but these uh, this was a. Uh, certainly attempt to uh, uh, find a happy medium between getting the, the, the back taxes, fees, and interest paid in, in the uh, most timely manner possible, but also be reasonable to, to work with their finances. Um, so I, I would um, ask for um, uh, uh, your, uh, your support on each resolution, uh, approval of each individual resolution. Uh, and that will allow us to, number one, uh, approve this repayment plan, and then also to remove it from the, uh, the list of the tax deed auction properties this coming Saturday morning. Okay. Any questions for Robert? Commissioner Kelly. Robert, do you have any idea what the, or I'm sure you do, the uh, back tax, the penalties and interest amount to? Uh, yes, that is part of your um, the memo. Uh, part of the information that's in. Oh, it's down below. Provided. Okay. Yep, it's behind here. behind each resolution is the uh, tax statement that okay. was provided by the the treasurer's office. And I would point out that these tax statements these are as of today. So, you know, the 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 amounts will will change after the end of uh, end of September and and. As over the course of them making these payments and, and coming up to, to speed, those, uh, to being current, those amounts will change. But those are snapshot as of today amounts. Okay, oh, okay but excuse me. How much is the penalties and interest? Is that in here? Mm -hmm. Yep. Where am I not seeing it? Mm -hmm. it's, it's first says original tax, then it says so interest. This is the original amount. These are the penalty, interest penalties in this. So okay. out of the 13 for 2300. And do we, have, do we have the ability to waive those? No. I don't. Not if we convey those. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> not if we convey those back to the uh, no, record, original record owner. Yeah. They must pay at least the amount owing plus those interest and penalties to gain the property back, so to speak. Okay. Commissioner Barr. Robert, do we know if these people are uh, also <laughs> exploiting uh, public assistance and do they owe us any money on liens? We did not uh, look into into lien uh, liens that were owed on this one. I, I know there were there was one case where there was um, some uh, um, 
an application for benefits that was not followed through on, and they're now looking to those benefits to become more regular on staying current. But directly to your question of a tie between these individuals and liens owed to the county, no. That wasn't county benefits, or was it? No, that was federal. Social Security. Yes. I'm going to go through these one at a time. Again, proposal submitted by the Dwight M. and Marlis J. Woods Woods Living Trust. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Madam Chair, can we discuss it? Yep, sorry. Commissioner Burke. Because I tell you what, people that for five years refuse to pay taxes of, you know, in the thousands of dollars, they have valuable properties. They're living in nice homes and are choosing to freeload while everyone else has to carry the burden. I find it very irritating, irksome, et cetera. And the fact that they have, you know, personal issues with finance, hey, lots of people do. I'm going to support this stuff, but I'm not happy that people are freeloading on us and owing us tens of thousands of dollars. Tens of thousands of dollars. It's irritating. Commissioner Benega? I thought you had a comment. I'm sorry. Okay, I thought you had a comment. Commissioner Kelly. Commissioner, to your point that I would say internally within the office, we have had discussions that moving forward we would explore options to maybe look at what maybe could be done in years two and three to connect with some of these homeowners, see what the issue is. Is there something that we can do to facilitate getting these things, getting these back taxes up to date before they get to this point? So that is certainly part of the discussion and understanding that it's a concern that we do have properties that are this delinquent on the tax rolls. Well, tens of thousands of properties have their taxes paid every year. And the fact that they go for five years without paying a cent, you know, it's irritating. Commissioner Barth, you have to remember that, just a minute, that when they pay their taxes they have to pay them in full. They can't pay a portion of it. And the other thing is if we've only got three people out of the thousands of people in Minneapolis County that do religiously and pay their taxes, and I think we have unique situations in all three of these or we wouldn't even be considering them. I mean, and I agree with what you say to some degree, but not completely. Commissioner Kelly. Well, I think we need to remember, though, they are paying between $1,300 and $2,400 in interest and penalties. So they are agreeing to pay in full. Yeah, they're delaying it, but at least we're getting some interest for our money. I don't know how much the penalties are, but I think the fact that they're doing it doesn't bother me. The threat of a sale usually gets their attention. And if there's one other point I could add on this, when they do get to the point of repaying these and getting back to being current, the schedule and the process of how they will repay is that the oldest year's taxes remains on, and that is the one that's paid last. So it backs up, and the next to oldest is the first paid, then one more recent, one more recent, and then the last one to get paid is the furthest back. So the county does retain the tax deed until it is paid in full. So if they renege on what they're supposed to do, they lose their property next year. And they would be, if that were to happen, very likely that it would be on the auction, on the tax deed sale next year. Any other comments or questions? Okay, I have a motion and a second on item A. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item B is a proposal submitted by Mr. Leslie C. Buckenberg. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Second. Are there any comments? Madam Chair, I think we should mention the amounts involved here. Okay. The first one was $9,391.22, and this one is 
$483.33 as of today. Okay. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item C is a proposal submitted by A. Dunger. Amaryllis Dunger. Amaryllis Dunger. I, yeah, she's a flower. Amaryllis Dunger, um, trustees for the Amaryllis Irrevo Revocable Trust in the amount of $11,218.45. Is there a motion? There is. Is there a second? Second. Any comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Robert. Item 16 is consider a motion to adopt the final fiscal year 2016 Minnehaha County budget. Carol Muller. Good morning, Commissioners. Carol Muller, Commission Administrative Officer. Today before you, you have the 2016 budget to approve. This process began last spring. As commissioners, you have worked with department heads and elected officials to fine tune a very tight budget. The budget presented to you is $79,639,277. This is an increase of $7.5 million over last year, but would point out that the majority of that is within the highway department of $5.5 million. Some key numbers for you to look at. The cash applied in total is 5.5 million, of which general funds are $3.8 million. Your goal a few months ago was to keep that under $4 million, and that has been achieved. We, we would note that you are using 1.5 million of the $3.5 million opt-out that you approved in July. As a note, 20% of the property taxes collected are because of the property tax opt-outs in Minnehaha County. So when somebody looks at their individual ta property tax bills, property taxes are the workhorse of South Dakota counties. And as a note here in Minnehaha County, while we represent, while Mini the Minnehaha County tax bill represents 20% of a Sioux Falls owner occupied property tax bill, those monies represent 55% of the Minnehaha County's 2016 budget. So we are very dependent upon property taxes more than any other entity is. And so we appreciate um, what property taxes do for, do for the county. So with that, we would bring forward the um, budget for 2016. Any questions for Carol? We have all spent many hours working on this budget, and I think read it through thoroughly many times. Also, department heads came with their best efforts forward to bring us what was the best and most um, conservative budget that they could possibly give us and still make their offices work. And I applaud you guys for that because I wouldn't want to do it. I don't want to do my job that way. <laughs> it's hard enough to do the budget without starting out and writing at the bottom. So, any other comments? Nope. Commissioner Kelly? Some of us spent a year in here last week. <laughs> and uh, and uh, after the convention, we went, obviously, to the uh, summer study. I think we're getting the attention of at least some of the legislators as to the problems that we're facing on uh, operating budget and on property taxes. And uh, uh, I did notice that we were like number 18 or 20, was that, in, a, in, in national property taxes. There was an article in the paper the other day, and we were higher, much higher than I thought. However, we don't have the, we do not have the uh, income tax, which has made quite a difference. But on the surrounding states, it looks like we're about in the ballpark with our property taxes and valuations. Of course, you go to the Minneapolis area, they're probably higher. So uh, I hope we're going to get something out of them. They asked us at the last day to come forward with some proposals. And so now it's going to be up to the SDACC to uh, be proactive on this thing and come forward. And obviously, we've only got about a month until our next meeting. So uh, I, th I think we're, we're at least getting the attention. There are some members of, of the legislature that say that, well, we spent a lot of money last year on highways, and we're not going to be very conducive to spending any more. But uh, I think generally they understand our issue. and. Uh, Hopefully, if we uh, continue to talk to our legislators and, you know, as the public understands more and more what our problems are, then uh, hopefully we'll be able to get ourselves into a better position to at least at least keep up with inflation and at least keep up with the costs 
uh, demands that are being held on us. Additional comments? Madam Chair, I'd make a motion to approve our budget for next year. Uh, this has been, I think, the longest budget process I can remember. It seems to me we've had about three provisional budgets that we've approved, and uh, today might be the day when we finish with this budget process and begin the next budget process, but I make a motion to approve it. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Additional discussion? To speak to Commissioner Kelly said they gave us about a month to um, come up with proposals. We have given them some proposals, but I think there was kind of a specific question, Carol, as far as they're looking for what we specifically need. Yes, one of the things that the um, legislators on the summer study did ask for was what what's the amount that counties would need in order to take care of the burdens that they aren't able to do and uh, also what would they be spending that on. So I know that they appreciated Commissioner Kelly coming out with a ballpark of about 50 to $70 million in total. They appreciated that number, would like to have that drilled down so that they know specifics. So I'm just wondering, is our office going to be facilitating with at least what Minnehaha County needs yes, to send we can out? Yes, submit, submit for that. Um, I'm wondering what our state office is gonna do. Um, if we just need to send our information on them and strongly encourage them to get information from all counties, not just Minnehaha County, mm -hmm. um, for those that weren't at the meeting and heard that directive from the legislators. Mm -hmm. so. Commissioner Heiberger, I also <coughs> would submit, since we talked a little bit about this last week, was also the impact of the TIFs. Um, the impact of the TIFs that are payable in Minnehaha County, uh, that are that is our share of the TIFs, payable in 2016 is $421,000. This is roughly 1% of the property taxes that are collected for Minnehaha County's operation. Four of the TIFs are located outside of Sioux Falls. 11 of them are located within Sioux Falls. The impact of the TIFs on our budget range from 79 cents, that's the smallest one, to the largest one being $106,484. The $421,000 is a 22% increase over last year, and the prior year over to that was 18%. Another way to look at that is that the TIFs, that $421,000 represents 28% of the $1.5 million opt-out. And next year, it's just going to be bigger. Any other comments about the budget before we vote? Commissioner Benica. What specifically are they asking for in reference to the estimate on taxes uh, in the growth of that? Are they looking at just 2017? Or are they looking for projections of years down the road where we're going to see typical significant increases in public safety? The legislator? Yeah. The legislators, the legislators did not give a real defined box as to what they're looking for. Um, I will tell you that what I would propose that we submit forward is um, an assumption of a few years down the road when we've got a jail up and running and saying we need to go through and pay for that. So that would be my assumption moving forward. Well, to me, that's an extremely unique question because out of the 66 counties or whatever there are, there's certainly not 66 identical needs uh, and to make a one equation conversation about how that gets funded is more than a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have three or four counties who have significant needs in particular areas and the other 60 or whatever are going to have much smaller and different needs and how to put a f one formula together based on a gross dollar amount seems like it's uh, shooting yourself in the foot for future e issues. Yeah, I think they're looking at this probably as a starting point and... Yeah, I, I think they're looking at long-term solutions, not short-term fixes, mm -hmm. because our problem is really not a short-term fix. I mean, you could throw in $5 million and that wouldn't really resolve anything. It may be a lot of a little incremental state, uh, including the the uh, alcohol, the distribution of that tax. They were very, 
uh, I thought positive on that. And um, so, and that's what we need is, is, a, is a long term look at this thing. How do we get the counties in better positions to have the revenues to, to take care of the expenses? Your point about differences uh, two counties, Bennett and Jackson, I'm sure there are others. Uh, and I can't remember, is it like under 200 taxpayers in Bennett County or Jackson, one or the other? Uh, you know, 60 or 70 percent of the land is in trust land. And so they have just, you know, like a couple hundred taxpayers supporting the county and the trust lands put demands on the county. So they're, you know, that's a, and those people are very close to, uh, they're, they're operating on the, just on the edge already. Uh, then you go to Minneapolis County where our jail needs are, and I think there's only 15 or so jails in the county. I can't remember the number, but uh, of the 66, you know, the vast majority of them don't even have jails. So uh, here again, it falls back on us. They talk about regional jails, uh, but we better have the, you know, if that's going to be the case, then you can better have the region bringing in the money on the original 30 or 40 or 50 million dollars it's going to cost. So. Uh, but <laughs> the one issue is, of course, that it's one county, one vote, as far as South Dakota Association is concerned. Uh, that makes it a little difficult for the top 10 counties to have uh, too much of an influence there other than trying to sell them. And they're concerned. They're always concerned that all the money is going to go to Lincoln, Minnehaha, uh, Brown, Rat Pennington. and. Uh, uh, that's a tough sell up there with that group, but I don't believe one vote, one county is particularly, <laughs> in this day and age, particularly indicative of how it, how it should be. I realize you got to protect the small counties, but that that's what we're facing. And, and so to get something that, the, that supported the association behind it, and I, I think it needs that. I, I don't think we can go in as lone rangers and peer and really accomplish much. Uh, that's where we're going to have to be. Okay, Commissioner Burr. Madam Chair, I was expecting that we would discuss our experience in peer as a separate uh, thing, maybe under liaison assignments. But as far as talking to the uh, summer study folks, uh, yeah, we made some progress, I think. I think that uh, there's a better understanding and certainly uh, a couple of uh, senators were surprised at, at things. Senator Valley suggested the 1% sales tax outside of the metropolitan or municipal boundaries. Uh, uh, Jenna Hager suggested uh, reallocation of the excise tax on alcohol. Uh, there was some understanding of our issues, and I think that uh, as far as what they want to talk about as far as our future needs. I think the idea would be to keep us, uh, you know, within the uh, uh, boundaries of the property tax limitation. So what other, what other uh, revenues would we need in order to stay uh, tight on our property tax? I think that's how I would interpret that. So the idea of, you know, raising it to 3% uh, or, which, or the rate of inflation or 3%, whichever is greater, probably is promising but uh, so what would what would fill the gap in anything over and above that I think is what we should be uh, thinking about and uh, I think that we we did make some progress with that committee uh, and uh, you know let let different ideas come forward and and we'll see where they go but uh, uh, in the meantime I think they have a better idea of some of our costs and uh, some idea about opportunities for savings as we cooperate with other other counties. Additional comments? We have a motion and a second on the fiscal year 2016 county budget. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Carol. Now we'll move on to liaison reports. Are there any liaison reports? I would like to talk about the convention yeah. and the stuff. And, uh, you know, when you go to these events, they have numerous uh, uh, little seminars on different items. Uh, uh, for example, I, I went to one on uh, uh, Register of Deeds, uh, electronic activities. I went to one uh, on uh, the ACA and how it affects our, our, our people. Uh, interestingly, uh, the highest area that uh, 
where people went from being uninsured to having insur insurance under the ACA was west of the river. Uh, the, the eastern side, we were doing a lot better before uh, the ACA. And, you know, I didn't fully understand how, uh, how the subsidies end uh, for people uh, below $11,000 a year, but that's in fact what happens since we've not chosen to have Medicaid expansion. Um, so people, you know, making 25 grand a year can get help from the, the government to uh, pay for insurance. People making less than 11,000 are dependent on county assistance. Um, I, I heard uh, a sheriff's uh, talk about their issues with housing prisoners. In fact, uh, one sheriff commented that, uh, I think he made the comment that he's having trouble finding room in the uh, Minnehaha County Jail for his prisoners and uh, because of our overcrowding and is forced to send uh, his prisoners elsewhere and he has to send the female prisoners one way and the male prisoners another way and he only has, I think, three deputies, and it's a 100-mile dri drive for uh, these other prisoners to go someplace. And so, you know, you drive them there, and the next thing you know, uh, they have to come back for court, and you have to go get them. And uh, in any case, uh, the, the issues of uh, jail capacity seem to be uh, sweeping across the state, and uh, it's, it's not something that we in Minnehaha County are are having a loan, and it's something that I think we need to address uh, soon. Um, in any case, there was also a nice uh, seminar on CAFOs. Uh, unfortunately, I missed a big chunk of it because I had to rush to an urgent board meeting. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of information out there, and, you know, I think uh, at a national event, there's obviously a lot more, but I thought this was a pretty uh, a uh, pretty good one, and certainly there was opportunities for networking with people of other counties. It seemed like I hung out with commissioners from Pennington County more than people from Jackson County. Additional comments on the convention? Just say, I, I also I was at the CAFO one that Jeff walked out on, wondered where he went. Um, but it, it was very good, and they just talked about the loss of, of economic impact that we have since we don't have as many CAFOs. They um, compared us actually to Sioux County in Iowa, which we all know they have lots if you've been down to Sioux County. But even the difference in the grain prices from Sioux County to Sioux Falls, which is about 90 miles, the grain prices are much higher because of the demand down in Iowa. Um, which I thought was interesting, not something I would have thought of before, but it, it was a significant difference in grain prices. It was like 25 cents, I think, on a bushel of corn. Yeah, and I don't remember. It was it was significant, but there were a lot of good um, seminars that we attended. We also did some, like you said, um, good networking and le talking about legislation to move forward um, with a with our economic woes that we have. Um, also, next year in the fall, Sioux Falls will be hosting the fall convention for the. Um, for the state association and so we will be putting together that association and so we did spend some time over supper one night discussing um, different programming and um, things that we would like to do and I look forward to next fall and hopefully we have a very large convention in Sioux Falls. So. It would be the most productive and uh, well-run convention ever. We will try. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any new business? <clears throat> no. Mr. Litz. Good morning, Commissioner Bob Litz from the Auditor's Office, and uh, uh, I'd like to speak a little bit about uh, our, my recent arrival here uh, a while back. You approved the purchase of a third DS850 ballot tabulation machine, and it arrived this week. We've unpacked it. Uh, we're waiting for uh, es and S to come and assemble it. Uh, so uh, uh, we're, we're real excited about getting that machine in there and, uh, and integrating it with the other machines, testing it, uh, do the acceptance testing, and testing it with all the ballots. Um, one other thing election-related came up is that uh, yesterday Darlene, Kim, and myself walked over to the 
Coliseum because I talked about having a sort of a, a super center, if you would, of uh, you know election activities all in one room, which uh, has a very strong appeal to me. And uh, I have found out that they have kids in there every day in, in that Coliseum now. I don't know if we can work something out with that or not, but uh, kind of threw a little rain on our parade in that regard. And I also wanted to thank Commissioner Kelly because he came in to the Secretary of State's uh, presentation on total vote and sat in there for a while and I think uh, uh, became aware of some of the astonishing complexities with that system. Uh, but I would also tell you that my confidence in the Secretary of State's office and uh, the help that they've got and uh, the emphasis that they put on total vote and some changes that we are making downstairs uh, with our end of total vote that I'm sure hoping that uh, we wind up better than we did the last election. Okay, thank you. Any other new business? Is there any old business? Hold on. Oh, sorry, new business. Uh, good morning, Scott Wicks from Empire Fair. And I apologize, I'm coming to you at kind of the 11th hour on this. On the, uh, on the City of Sioux Falls surplus auction is a piece of equipment that we could uh, use almost daily out at the fairgrounds. It's a payloader they're surplusing. It's a John Deere 644G. Uh, I didn't see it on the list before, I just saw it last week, so I got a hold of Robert and have been working with the city liaison, Jeff Schmidt. So I'm here to ask for your support to go through the process to ask the city for that to be surplused to the county and then have that surplus to the Swim Pair Fair Association. We, we, we borrow from Merlin Roy's on a regular basis. Dan Perrin's on our board, he'll drop one off. But as they continue to get busier and busier and they're tied up with that big project on the interstate, uh, there isn't one available right now, so we would have to go rent one. And uh, with the, the cement in the center room and more and more events that are non-livestock, we move that dirt in and out quite a bit, mm -hmm. and we would also use it for snow removal. Any questions for Scott on the payloader? Commissioner Kelly? Well, he does need some action on this today, yes. correct? Right. Yeah. Um, our, the first would be a motion for the commission to approve uh, acceptance of the donated item from the City of Sioux Falls, which would be a 1995 John Deere payloader, model number 64-G, um, asset number 51-46. I'll make that motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any additional conversation all those in favor say aye. Aye. aye those opposed same sign motion passes unanimously the second motion would be for the commission with a unanimous vote to approve a resolution donating this item which I just referenced to the to the Sioux Empire Affair Association um, contingent on the city donating the item to us I'll make that motion second a motion in a second any other comments do we have what you need Cindy Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Go drive around. <laughs> Thank you very much. Try your tractor. All right. Uh, no other new business? Is there any old business? Okay. I'd look for a motion to adjourn into executive session for contract negotiations. And if oh. I may, uh, also for litigation legal briefing. Okay. And for litigation. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passed unanimously. We are adjourned. Thank you.